you finish that awesome book you've been reading and a few days later your friend asks you so how was the book you've been reading i saw you were raving about it on social media so you go on and say things like oh the book was so intriguing and insightful and even inspiring and then your friend counters you with the next question oh how so only then would you face the harsh reality that you'd forgotten about 80% of what you read and what remains is just this hazy outline of its content. And this happened to me one too many times. So I finally decided to end the cycle of mistaking reading for understanding. And that's how I discovered SQ3R an active reading strategy that helps readers absorb and retain more information. And the best part of it all is that this technique can be applied to any learning situation, not just when you are reading books. You can easily apply this to a lecture setting or even when you're watching a YouTube video, much like you're doing right now. But helping us remember what we read or learn is not the only benefit SQ3R offers. I think we can all agree that one of the greatest challenges we face as a reader and a learner is to bridge the gulf between understanding a concept and actually implementing it in real life. And SQ3R helps us apply our knowledge to our actions because it encourages us to engage and interact with the subject and that provides us better understanding. And when we have a better understanding, it becomes easier to embody the concept. And as you probably guessed already, SQ3R is an abbreviation. So S stands for scan, Q stands for question, and three R's stand for read, recall, and review. Each step encourages the reader to become more intentional with each stage of reading before reading, during reading, and after reading. So how do we actually practice SQ3R, you may ask? The first step is to scan. The purpose of this step is to just to get a big picture of what we're reading. So in this step, we quickly scan and look for things that can give us clues of what the text is going to be about. So the most obvious clue would be the title and headline. And other things you can look for are bold letters, quotes, charts, images, and the biggest clue would be the summary. And I personally find it extremely helpful to read the summary first. To me, reading the summary first is like having a GPS map to a place I've never been before. It gives me a clear direction so that I don't get lost in the way. And the next step is question. This step primes our brains. Our brains are problem solving machines. And when we see questions, we start actively searching for answers. And that's what makes us highly engaged in reading and learning. And you're probably wondering what kind of questions are we talking about here? <laughs> the simplest way to compose question is to turn the heading or the title into a question before reading. For example, if the title is The Surprising Power of Atomic Habits, you can turn that into What is the Surprising Power of Atomic Habits? And if the title is Read for Understanding, you can maybe turn that into How do I read for understanding? Or What does it mean to read for understanding? And these are pretty straightforward examples, but if you see some cryptic title like the man who didn't look right. Maybe you can ask yourself, what is the author trying to convey with this story? Or how is this part related to the theme of this book or this chapter? Other questions we can ask are, what is the author's main point? How does this relate to what I read a few pages ago? And how does this relate to my personal experiences? And I highly recommend guessing the answers to these questions before you proceed to read. Some studies suggest that guessing helps us learn better, even if our initial guess is incorrect. Another thing I would like to recommend is 
to take this step before reading every subsection instead of every chapter. The subsection is smaller than one chapter, so it makes it easier to remember the question and process the information while reading. Now that we've completed the prepping stage, the next step is to read with a clear purpose. So we look for the answers to the questions that we prepared. And the key here is to actively engage with the text instead of just following the words. Another way to make this reading process interactive is to read with a pen in your hand. You can highlight or underline parts that are important or you can also mark parts that are confusing to you. I sometimes write additional questions down in the margins or on sticky notes too. The next step is recall. After you finish reading each subsection, stop and think if you can answer the questions in your own words. Be very careful not to quote or borrow the words that the author used in the text because that would trick you into believing that you understand that text even when you don't. I have fallen into this trap too many times so take it from me. One of my favorite ways to do this step is to make up analogies. It helps me simplify and grasp the essential elements of the concept I am trying to learn. For example, I might say that reading a book in a conventional way is like eating fast food. It fulfills your hunger but it provides very little nutritional value. On the other hand, reading with SQ3R is like cooking at home. It is time consuming, but you gain a substantial skill set and you get more nutrient dense meals. As I said, this helps me simplify the concept and reinforces my understanding. So I like to make up analogies whenever I can. The final step is review. After finishing the book, we go over the questions we created and see if we can still answer them in our own words. Another great way to review what we read or what we learned is to write a short summary. Nothing reveals holes in our understanding better than writing about it. So this process works as the litmus paper for our comprehension of that subject. And some questions to consider during this step are, what are the main ideas? What is the significance of this concept? Which idea or concept would I like to implement right now? And whenever I write a summary, I try explaining the concept to a child in three sentences. As Einstein once said, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. So this is how you practice SQ3R. And there is a drawback to this seemingly bulletproof reading slash learning strategy. This whole process is undoubtedly more time consuming than a standard reading style. So it will slow you down and it will be more mentally demanding. But that is actually the point of it all to slow down and use our brains. It could be frustrating at first to see the declined reading speed. And when that happens, try to remember that you picked up the book or whatever you're learning because you want to learn something, not because you want to finish it. And you will quickly realize just like I did that this way of reading is actually far more gratifying and fulfilling. You're likely to find yourself more motivated and focused while reading because SQ3R allows you to tap into your intrinsic motivation like curiosity and inquisitiveness. And I have created a Notion template to practice SQ3R. It has pre-prepared questions to help you implement SQ3R in your reading. For those of you who are not familiar with Notion, it is an extremely versatile note-taking slash project management tool. And it can definitely supplement your learning or reading experience, in my humble opinion. You do need to create an account to use this template, but it's completely free for personal use. So if you'd like to use this Notion template, head over to the description of this video and click the link and follow the directions that are provided on that page.
In this video, I focused on describing how to use this strategy while reading, but as I said in the beginning, it can definitely be applied to any learning situation, either when you're listening to a lecture or watching a tutorial video on YouTube. So I would like to encourage you to practice this method right after watching this video. Start by asking yourself the following questions. What was the main point or message of this video? What is SQ3R and its purpose? And how do you practice SQ3R? And how can it benefit me? I hope this video was helpful to make your reading and learning experience more fulfilling. And please drop me a line in the comment section and let me know how it went for you. And I'll see you guys in the next video.